Good morning everybody, my name is Isaac and I just got done building this school bus back here in 30 days with, a help, with help from a bunch of my friends. This is a international T44E short bus on a commercial chassis and this bus is for a client named Brandon and he's taking this thing on a longboard tour and it starts next month which is uh, why there was such a rush on it. So I'm pretty proud of this bus build and we're gonna take you through it now and kind of show you what's, what's going on and we're gonna start with the exterior. So one of the first things that was really important to Brandon is he needs to be able to take 20 long boards on tour. So he had a special request for these big, huge long board drawers and they're on big 500 pound locking sliders. He has two of them. The, the bottom is the main one. And he's got this top one up here. And you know, I know they seem pretty simple, but this drawer system took four days to build. And I think it's a great space of, of, the, of the space underneath the bed. So now that I've done them, I'm kind of sold on the idea, honestly. All right, so this is uh, two by fours. We made a two by four ladder that goes up to his eight by 20 deck. And let's go up there and show you that. Okay, so this is Brandon's eight foot by 20 foot school bus deck. Honestly, probably the biggest deck I've ever seen. I think we used some kind of pressure treated fur and we deck sealed it. And that's two coats, I think, of uh, decking decking stuff and then that segues into our solar so we have two 200 watt grape solar panels for a total of 400 watts of solar on the roof and then that's dropping through the deck running underneath it through a port and then down to his electrical system which we'll show you later in this tour so that's Brandon's big old big old deck Okay, so I forgot to mention how those, those deck feet that we use to build the deck on the roof. Those brackets are from schoolie.com and I've seen a million ways to attach a deck and like that's kind of the best way i found if you're not a metal fabricator and can't weld like me. And you can get a discount on those deck feet. You just use, uh, I'll, put it, I'll put the code in the description because I don't remember it off the top of my head right now. So those deck feet are from school, schoolie.com. Okay, so the last few things on the outside of the bus, one of them is the shore power port. And this basically goes to a trickle charger inside that'll keep his house batteries topped off. He has three ways to charge his electrical system. The shore power port, a DC to DC charger as soon as the vehicle's turned on, and those 400 watts of solar on the roof that we mentioned earlier. We did add a backup camera because, you know, backing these things up, kind of can't see nothing sometimes so that's what that is and that's have wired to a monitor a bluetooth monitor inside the vehicle and then we also have the exhaust tubes for his heater okay so this is brandon's electrical system and i'll just kind of walk you through it pretty quick so he has two 100 amp hour battleborne lithium battery storage so two batteries 100 amp hours each and this is the Grape Solar 40 Amp MPPT Charge Controller. And we have the 40 Amp DC to DC Charger back there from Renogy. We have a 2000 watt Renogy Inverter that is wired to a switch, so all his outlets can be turned on with just a flick of a switch. And then he has his 12 volt fuse block over here with all his appliances hooked up to that. So I think every bus build should have a diesel heater like this thing's only like 160 bucks and it makes such a huge difference like you can thermostat control it and it'll kick on and off to keep the temperature like it's a big deal like when i installed a heater in my bus i feel like it really made it a home instead of like i'm in a vehicle and i'm cold give me another blanket and the reason it's kind of in this location is because he has these giant ac units underneath his bus because this bus was from Arizona and I didn't really have a lot of room underneath like I normally do. And this was like one of the only places I could put it where I could get the exhaust tubes out from underneath the bus and not hit a frame rail. 
because of this giant thing as well. So basically you have the diesel heater here, the exhaust comes out, and then I have an extension tube for ducting that's taking the heat through here and out that wall right there. And then the diesel, the fuel tank is here and the fuel runs down through the floor, through the fuel pump and back up to the heater. And then this is like some fancy three quarter inch plywood heat ducting so that my hot heat heat tube, I guess we would call it, isn't just sitting against this plastic and gonna melt it over time. And that's kind of it for back here, the garage area. Again, these are the giant longboard drawers that he needed. But if like you were building a bus and you didn't have long, like, I don't know. I use, a, I don't use a lot of this space up top and this is a good way to kind of use it. So this was really hard to build, but I know I might put it in a future build, even not for longboard. So, all right, let's, uh, I think we're ready to go inside. So let's take the tour inside and we'll show you what's going on in there. I should mention real quick, this was actually school bus yellow when we started here 30 days ago. Now it's white. We painted it here as well before we started the conversion inside. Now let's take the tour inside. All right, so we didn't do much with like the driving area of the bus because personally, I like buses because I like buses and I like to keep some of the original stuff in a bus. Uh, but I will talk you through what we added up here. So this is a commercial bus, which means it doesn't have like a cigarette port so that you can charge your phone like in any other normal car. So we added, we wired in right here, this USB deal so that you can plug your phone in, charge it while you're driving, etc. It also has a voltmeter so you can keep an eye on your house battery bank. And the other thing we wired in is this switch here, and that is for the backup monitor that is hooked up over there. So that's Bluetooth to the camera in the back, and when you're backing up, you just hit this switch to turn that monitor on. And then I have it hooked up to the running lights, so when the vehicle's on, you just turn your lights on and then your signal is going to come through that monitor. Alright, so we're going to start, we're going to come into the bus and kind of show you what's going on. The first thing we did is put a floor in. And I use, I like to use a vinyl life-proof flooring because it's, it's, it's thin, so it doesn't take a lot of your head space. It's, it's, I wouldn't say waterproof, but it is kind of waterproof. Like it's, it's really good. It's easy to put together. And we kind of went uh, this way on the bus just to try and because there was the floor wasn't exactly level, and I think this was, this was a better way of like making it flatter as it goes down versus this way, which I have done in the buses before. So that's just a life-proof vinyl flooring. One of the first things you see here is this color scheme. I didn't have a lot of time. I had no time. I had 30 days to build this bus. And there's no way I could have made all of this furniture and painted two coats on everything and installed it in this time frame. So we decided to go with pre-finished maple and we got finished blades. So we just cut everything and then we just broke the edge with a sander and then after it, and just installed it. So just cut it and installed it. Like you can't do that if you're going to paint all your furniture. Like you can, but you're going to paint it inside. And then you go back and we use an oil to oil all the edges. So then it's completely finished. And I think it looks great. The other choice, uh, design choice too, is he wanted a little bit of accent color and that's what this is. So this is actually birch and we use a uh, red mahogany oil to finish all this. So as you go, we go through the bus, you're gonna see accents. There's gonna be pre-finished maple and there's gonna be oiled birch. So that brings us to this right here. He wanted a shoe rack as you first come in the bus. So you can take your shoes off, put them here, and not track a bunch of stuff into the bus, obviously, right? And this is just three-quarter ply, birch, and then we oiled it. And one of the, the tricky things is we got this little false floor right here because there's a bunch of, like, heater hoses, and we had to, like, cover that up. Okay, so this is the dinette booth. My favorite dinette booth I have ever made. <laughs> like, it's basically you know cut with a skill saw and done by hand and I think it looks pretty good and it's got and it drops down so this table will will come up and it will drop down into an extra bed and these cushions our friend actually hand covered for us this is just foam from Fred Meyer it was like 20 bucks and then we got some fabric and we had a friend who was really good at sewing sew these 
and then we have storage in each one of these dinette booths on hinges and it's kind of a lot in my opinion because I in my bus like the storage is really hard to get a hold of or to get to and I wanted to make all of that space very simple to access over here so we have most of our electrical system kind of control panel like in this dinette booth so that the wire just goes through the dinette booth through the closet and back to the system and basically he's got these 12 volt silicone lights on a dimmer switch as you can see there and he has another USB right here so he can charge his phone and kind of be in this area he also has 110 outlets here and 110 outlets over here in the kitchen and those outlets can just be turned on with this switch right here so the 110 you never want to just leave it on because it draws just being turned on so I like to only turn my outlets on when I need them so I like a switch like real easy to access so you get these 110 outlets and a couple more USBs when you flip flip the inverter on I'm pretty sure you guys have heard me talk about dividers in past videos I usually I don't like them I think it breaks this separates the space I've never been a fan and he was really adamant about putting a divider in here for a closet and I think one divider on one side isn't so bad the space still feels pretty open so and, and this is the exact same color that we put on the exterior. So this was a way to kind of tie the, the, the exterior into the interior along with the red accents because his deck is red too. So this closet, we're just using a little leather strap handle. And this is three quarter ply, three quarter ply with wainscoting. And we put in this closet dowel so he can hang all his clothes up, oh, all his clothes jackets things like that we have a couple shelves in here just to kind of throw some stuff on but one of the other little tricky cool things I wanted was he wanted a drawer for his electronics so if you look in here we actually mounted uh, an outlet inside the drawer so that he could be charging cameras computers all that kind of stuff while it's in the drawer and he's driving so he can just put it in the drawer plug it in turn his inverter on and all this stuff is charging and he's got we haven't mounted these yet but I got to do this tour now before he gets a little crazy and starts moving in so these these little dividers right here he can put his laptops in here and I think I think it's actually a great idea to have a way to power charge all the stuff while it's actually just put away so right here because of those big old things, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do here. So this is actually a false wall. Well, not a false wall, but basically that's his longboard drawer. And it comes out like this and goes over here and, and covers the back, all the, the stuff back there. And he's got his heat ducting here. And then we have a battery monitor here so he can see where his battery's at just by looking. You can connect to the charge controller with a Bluetooth connection. But it's like, that's a whole thing. You gotta get your phone out, connect to it. So he can just look down there and see where his battery's at. And he also has the voltmeter here. He's the voltmeter up there. So he can, can kind of always just at a glance see where his battery system is at. And if he's like parked under a tree and can't get solar, he can just kick the vehicle on for 15 minutes and charge it right back up. And he also has an under lighting kit, which this is for. And we brought it through the wall and attached it there. But the cool thing too is this little space that was going to be unusable. I had no idea what I was going to do with it. Now he can, you know, steal butcher block and hide it back there. You know, it's like it's a little more storage. And in, in this type of vehicle, storage is huge. Any little nook and cranny you can put stuff is a big deal. So I kind of like this idea of having this little like inset little compartment deal here. Okay, so. He has a full size bed, which I think is the perfect size for a bus. Because it's not like super massive, it's taking a bunch of your space in the living area. It's big enough for two people, even three, comfortably, you know, if you get down like that. And then uh, over here, we just have a headboard at the, at the end of the bed. And it's just a little more storage, clothes, knickknack, patty wax, whatever you want to do. Okay, so as you can tell, the bed is slatted. One of the biggest mistakes I see beginning builders do is they'll put a sheet of plywood here, 
right? So what that does is your body creates moisture when you sleep. So there's moisture going through the mattress, it's plywood, the moisture gets trapped, it creates mold in like about a week. So if you have a plywood sheet, I recommend just lifting your bed up and seeing if you've created mold yet. That happened in my van years ago and I didn't know what to do so I took a big old hole saw. I hole sawed a bunch of holes in it thinking it would vent that way. It wasn't enough. It was not enough till I slatted it. So every bed frame I ever make, I slat the bed so the mattress can breathe and the moisture doesn't get trapped and doesn't create mold. I highly suggest you slat your bed. Okay, so we're moving this way in the bus build and this little guy right here is one of my favorite features in this bus. I've seen slide out pantries in other people's buses and I've never really tried it till recently. And it's also, as you can tell, kind of another half divider into the bed. And check this out. Oh, look at that. It may not look like much, but this was an entire day. Actually, it was two days. So it took all day to figure this out. And then I spent another probably three hours trying to hang this. Try to get two sliders to match up and not jam. It was kind of a mission. So I'm really, really proud of this slide out pantry. And it just, you know, I don't you know. This is my first one. I'm a little proud of it, if you can tell. <laughs> okay, so as you come over here, we have a kitchen cabinet, right? And we use butcher block just because it, I didn't, again, I didn't have time to be doing live edge and epoxy and all that craziness. You just cut this, you rub some mineral oil on it, and you walk away. One step done. And if you look here, so he has a really nice sink. We will put a, a, a link to this sink in the description below. So the way the plumbing system works is we have a Whale Gusher foot pump, right? It has, we have two six gallon water tanks. So right now the Whale Gusher foot pump is put in this tank and then it pumps up through this food grade tubing to this whale faucet so it's made to go together and then when this one runs out he'll just switch that tank forward and then you know go find a place to fill this one and he's got another six gallons to run super simple you can keep more water tanks in here in the back and you can get water anywhere walmart fred meyers easy breezy it's a simple system to install and a simple system to maintain. And then it's drained. So this is a Camco flexible drain right here. And this drops through the floor to a, a small gray tank underneath. And that's it. Very simple, very simple system. Overhead shelves. I mean, open shelves, I should say. I really like them. I've really started to like open shelving lately. The reason is, in my bus, I have big old pantry, it's huge, as a door. There's stuff that gets lost in there, I don't even know what's in there. The cool thing about an open shelf is all the stuff you're buying, you can just see it. You can see what's there, you can see what level it's at. I kind of like the idea, because I there's a lot of food that goes bad and a lot of food I didn't even know I had in my bus. So it's like... The cool little fancy closed shelves are cool for some people, but for me, I like this because I can just see what's there and what's not. So one of the last few things about this kitchen cabinet is this drawer right here. This is going to be a silverware slash drunk drawer. And I'm, I'm pretty proud of, of how good I got it to slide in and out. I honestly haven't done that many drawers, so I think that's super cool. The other thing is, is we have a set power AJ50 fridge, 12 volt, and it's actually on a set power slider. So, comes out with a little bit of dust, you know, and then he can keep whatever he wants to keep in here. And we wired a 12 volt socket back there to keep the fridge powered. And then it just slides back in underneath and locks in place. So there's no straps, nothing like that. Just clicks in, clicks out, and it ain't going nowhere when you drive. So another thing that kind of threw us off on this build, again, I was trying to do it quick. I had 30 days to build this whole bus. So everything you've seen today was done in 30 days. I don't know how, but it was.
these lights. So I really like these 12 volt silicone lights. The only downside to those lights is it's hard to attach them. We've not, no glue will stick to it, no tape will stick to it. Like you, it literally comes with these mounts and you have to use the mounts to hang them up, right? So I was thinking I would just pre-drill a hole, use the mount and just hang it up real quick and then tie them into the system in the back. No, Brandon's bus is the only bus I've ever found that had steel on the exterior and this is steel, not just sheet metal. And man, I just, I couldn't get the little cheap screws that come with those mounts to hold the dang holder up. So, one thing I've learned about bus building too is, is like if something's not working, just because you try harder and spend three hours trying to make it work, doesn't mean it's going to work. So there comes a point where you got to just call it and reinvent the wheel. And that's what we kind of did here. So if you look close here, we basically used my table saw and notched out the wood so it has like a wood back and then as you can see right here we attached the little holder to the wood and then you can stick the silicone light in it and then by kind of having this this track that we made the silicone light sits on it and lays flat so and then and then we screwed these to the wall and used these screw caps to cover up the screws and that's that's how we made a light track basically by hand we had to we had to trim it with wood okay so brandon's girlfriend is actually the one who came up with the idea for this it's called the day bed right so i know in a lot of buses myself included basically we do a couch that has a scissor hinge uh or a scissor design and then it pulls out into an extra guest bed right but ask anybody who's actually ever done a scissor system bed like in a DM and not on a YouTube video and they usually do not like them myself included they just jam they're hard to pull out they're hard to put anything that's hard to do you just don't do so I've pulled my bed out maybe five times total in the two years I've had it so with that being said, Brooke's idea to do a day bed. So a day bed is like a little bit wider than a couch, but it's like a loungy couch. So it, it's just fixed. It's enough room. You could lay down and sleep on it. It's, it's not too far out where you can't like sit down. So it's, it's just a little bit deeper than a normal couch. And I think it's a perfect design because the other thing is when you do a scissor system it's hard you got to do this thing and it's hard to get to the storage underneath but I'm going to show you this this day bed literally gives you this much storage you know like that's a lot that's a lot of storage that's like a trunk you can put backpacks we, we joke that this bus is going to be like a bro wagon and I was like Brandon can put like five backpacks and like five of his homies in here and they can just move in like I really like this idea and I'll probably use this in future builds like I've never seen a day bed in another bus conversion so kudos to Brooke it was a great design choice okay ladies and gentlemen this is the shred sled I'm really proud of what we accomplished here in 30 days and I had a lot of help too so don't think I was out here by myself in the woods like building this bus by myself I was part of the time but I did have a lot of help so when I took this job for Brandon I asked him for a week of his time up front to get it really moving and then I hired a, a guy for the second week for an entire week so I had help two weeks straight on this uh, 30 day build and then I had kind of friends filter in and out kind of helping me wrap it up and Brandon and Brooke are here the last few days helping me put the final touches on the bus so this is the shred sled it is a commercial chassis short bus T44E motor and to recap what's in it like we have a full-size bed we have a dinette that drops into an extra bed we have a day bed we have a 12 volt fridge we have six outlets we have lights on a dimmer switch. We have 12 gallons of fresh water drops to a 10 gallon gray tank underneath. Everything is three quarter pre-finished plywood with birch 
oiled accents, leather straps. We have 200 amp hours of lithium battery bank, 40 amp DC to DC charger, 2000 watt inverter, 40 amp MPP charge controller, and 400 watts of solar on the roof. And this is what we were able to do in 30 days. You're looking at it. And I'm pretty proud. So I hope Brandon loves it. If you guys see this bus out on the road, make sure to go say hi to him. This is Isaac signing out, and I'm stoked to build more buses and share them with you guys as well and teach you how to build buses. So if you're not already subscribed, please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a build or a tour or all that good stuff. And hit the bell if you want to be notified when I put a video up. Jaylena, leave her wild, is behind the camera today. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope we run into each other someday. Peace. Put the devil booty doesn't have a back, no, no, no.